When using Aerorack modulars, we are all trying to reach a new level of complexity slash organicity in music making. The main purpose of this journey is to have what you can't have in a fixed structure synthesizer. So, in a previous video, I recorded some patches with Tabor by Johnny Lab mainly as a analog source, audio source, something that can create sound. But this week I wanted to try something really different. Since I recently discovered that if you slow enough Tabor, you can get a real queer, strange, sometimes swinging, sometimes shuffling clock source or gate source. So here you have three different patches with Tabor as a clock or gate source. So we begin with patch number one, Tabor as a gate. For this patch we need an audio source, so I picked up my piston on the by Harvestman and I'm connecting to Lopas gate which is up to mix by make noise and now we need to put Tabor in what I, uh, I like to call clock mode so basically we are just slowing down Tabor as slow as we can get it to run and it's just start to clock like a trigger or an impulse, it's just a gate. So we can dial in the right amount, maybe a little bit too fast. We can slow it down. four oscillators are taking part in uh, the rhythmic generation. Let's try to find in it some different maybe polyrhythmic sounds. gate now. Nice. So, before we are patching the tabor more like as a gate, since we are closing and opening the low pass gate um, using its CV input. So, now I want to try something different with it, something more 
commonly used for clock. So we start out with um, doubling clock mode. So we need to put the pressure point out to the air input of tabber. So in order to find the sweet spot for the clock in tabber, we need first to hear where we need to stop. So patching the end output to our mixer so we can hear tabber, we just slow it down till it stops. And from there we just dial in a little bit of voltages so we can find the really sweet spot for this as a clock source. And as you can see every little movement can change its rhythm. Nice, a perfect steady clock. So now, um, in order to trigger my rumble for a um, squarp instrument, I need to have multiple gates or clocks. So I patch the N output from Tabor to Orologic Solum, which is a clock divider. And from there, I need to connect the mix output from Rample to the mixer output, and I've taken the division by four, division by two, and now we can hear a pretty decent kick. And hi hat. So these smudges and dirtiness of the clock you are hearing in just the tabor acting itself so it's not a perfect city clock uh, like the one you can find in a sequencer or a clock source it's more organic more strange so we can now use one of the other output from tabor let's try with the trigger output or maybe we can use the, the fat output yeah. So right now the N and the R output of Tabor are outputting the same clock, but since we have divided with the Orologic solo, we have two different rhythms. Our base clock connected to the side stick of the sample library inside Rample, and maybe we need to slow it down a little bit. Wait, sorry. Better. Okay. So, so right now we have three available clock slash trigger output from the module. The trigger output, the end output and the fads output. We can change the, the drum. Okay. And you have this strange quirk drummer inside your modular. Patch 3. Strum. We need to <coughs> start out as in previous patches with double in clock mode. So I'm monitoring the output to find the best space where I just stop. Okay, there you go. You have also visual feedback for the clock. So I um, just want to use this track output for this patch since I um, want to do um, Carplus P 
pass with my 188 from Dofa. And we need uh, a noise source. So in mode 3, 1 of this thing, MK1 or MK2 also, you have the sample and hold with the a noise, a digital white noise uh, available from the B output. Oops, no sound since I need to connect my A188 to monitor out. Okay, there we go. Pure digital what noise. The low pass gate also helping us with filtering a little bit of those frequencies. And now we can dial in the right amount of feedback in order to obtain a steady resonator. And we can adjust pitch. And rhythm by controlling the DC we are sending to air input of top. Now I'm just switching the the feedback path of the 188. So it changed sound. A bouncing ball effects, isn't it? There's a link in the description to read an article about an in-depth look of this technique with patch diagrams and patch notes and a lot of other things.